you now. As I mentioned earlier, we took a side trip to St. Brendan's Island today, which is about a two-hour trip from Gander by car and then by boat. And here's how that trip went. One thing about living on an island, you get to take a lot of boat rides. I'm about to board the ferry Hamilton Sound, which is making the run these days between Burnside and St. Brendan's Island. I've never been to St. Brendan's before. Uh, I know it's in Bonavista Bay. I know that people have lived over there for years and years and years. I know it's a bit isolated, and I know that they've had to put up with every kind of weather condition. But apart from that, I don't know very much about it. But I'm hoping to learn a lot more today. So St. Brendan's, here we come. hundreds of islands in this part of Bonavista Bay. Some big, some small, with names like Flat Island, Black Island, and Willis's Island. Now, at one time, some of these islands were inhabited, but these days, I think you'll find only a few have people living on them. Well, today I'm going to get to do something I haven't done before. I'm going to get to sit in this captain's chair. Do you mind, uh, Captain? Go right in, Carl. Thank you very much. This is... Uh, Captain Charlie James, uh, he's the captain of the Hamilton Sound, and uh, Captain, this is a new run for you, isn't it? You haven't made this run too often before. Well, not not too often before, no. Uh, we get here uh, occasionally when they're for a refit. And what time of the year is the weather really bad? Well, coming on now, this time of the year, you get uh, windy weather, you know. I noticed that uh, you're not at the wheel, or you're not... <laughs> Well, Are we running, uh, is the boat running itself? Or running what? itself. Well, right now we're on automatic pilot, eh? Oh, all so, right, you've got automatic pilot just like the planes. Just, just, oh, yeah, it's just automatic pilot. Eh? Makes your job a lot easier. Sure do. <laughs> sure takes a turn to crank that old wheel back and forth. Yes, for sure, yeah. Like many Newfoundland communities, it was the fishery that was the backbone of St. Brendan's. Now the cod's gone, and fishermen in St. Brendan's fish part-time for species like lump and lobster. But it was the cod that brought people to this island 150 years ago. In the glory days, about 800 people lived on St. Brendan's, now about 350. The names haven't changed, though. You'll still find plenty of Whites, Burrisfords, Brodericks, Kellys, and Crokes. This is Crokes General Store. They've been in business since 1951. And when you carry a little bit of everything, people will beat a path to your door. We're in Croke's store at St. Brendan's, and this is Ruby White, a clerk here in the store. And Ruby, are you from St. Brendan's? Yes, I am. You grew up here? Yes. Well, that's interesting. Tell me, what was it like growing up uh, on St. Brendan's? I found it very enjoyable growing up in St. Brendan's. I found with such a small community and the families were so large, everybody was close-knit. You didn't feel isolated at all growing up here? Not at all, no. Mm -hmm. So do you plan to stay here uh, at St. Brendan's now or yes, are you going to move on one of these days? No, planning to stay. And as we leave St. Brendan's Island, it's a little sad to think of a place like this without a thriving fishery, its reason for being. And you have to wonder, you know, how much longer these people will stay. But Ruby White's made her decision to stay, and I must say, I did see an awful lot of happy faces on St. Brendan's when I was there. So maybe the future for this place is not as dark as some people might think. That was a great trip today, and I want to thank everybody on St. Brendan's Island for extending such wonderful hospitality to us today.